good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome on this Sunday morning here for the grand finale of the Neve Literature Festival Festival Reading Challenge that we've hosted. We have a lot of lovely questions that the team here at Neve and here us at Kushala have put together. So we're going to go through the next couple of, you know, one hour, one hour, 20, 30 minutes or so, running through the lovely questions that we have for the four best teams from across the globe that we have who participated in the reading challenge. All right. So let's get a sense of what's happened over the course of the last two and a half months. We've had 30 books, 30 books that all these teams here have read cover to cover. And I had, they had two months, I had like 24 hours. So they clearly know more than the quiz master here. I'm just a facilitator, right? And I'm going to speak to the team here at Neve. These guys have really done an incredible job because they are the four best teams out of 605 teams, ladies and gentlemen. So a round of applause for all of them, right? We've had 10 interactive sessions with authors. We've had 280 teams, which then went to the preliminary rounds, 55 teams in the semi-final, and then we have the four teams here. So now let's go through the four teams here one by one and see who these teams are. So welcoming our finalists, team number one on stage is Team Ninjas, ladies and gentlemen. Vivan Babbar, Sabya Saneja, and Nirvik Patodia. Our second team on stage is Lightning Readers from Fountainhead School, Surat Ananya Lapsiwala, Viona Desai, and Banj Virani. Our third team on stage is the Book Runners from Pep School V2, Bangalore, Archana Mishra, Myra Ashri, and Anika G. And the fourth team is the home team, ladies and gentlemen, Cookie Squad. Neve Academy, Rishita, Ivy Rajkumar, Dia Suresh, and Leher Mehta. So folks, these are literally the best teams across the world. We've taken a lot of questions. Every single book is represented in some form of a question here. So let's get started with proceedings without any further ado. And for a sense for the teams here on stage and for our audience members here as well who have joined us on this lovely Sunday, we have four rounds of quizzing we're going to be doing, folks. So now I'm going to be looking at the four teams here. Can you guys see me nice and clear? Awesome. So you guys have any doubts, anything that you want to clarify, I'm available. You can ask me questions and I'll be more than happy to address them for you. For now, you should know that there are four rounds of quizzing we're going to be having. Each and every round, we will explain the rules, how it works, etc. as and when we go through the round. Is that okay? Awesome. Let's go to the first round, ladies and gentlemen. The buzzers aren't going to be used for the first three rounds. So you can just not think about the buzzers for the first three rounds. It only comes at the last round. So we want some drama, some masala for the last rapid fire buzzer round that we have. For now, for the first round, ladies and gentlemen, we have eight questions we're going to be asking you. And it's a topic round. So the round is known as the choose your topic round. So my colleague is going to come. He's going to come with a bowl of chits. So we want all of you to pick two chits at one go and that will determine what topics you're going to be getting on screen. Okay? There's no negative marking, so don't worry about it at all. But that said, there's no passing. So whatever question is allocated to team one, you will be getting it team two, three and four respectively. All right? So there's no negative marking, there's no passing. And there are 10 topics that we have formed questions on. The teams on stage will pick eight. The remaining two we will ask our friends and family here in the audience to participate and partake in. How many of you have read the books here, the children here, can you just raise your hand? So fantastic. How many parents have read the books with the kids as well? I think that's a more important question also to ask. Some of them here, fantastic. Alright folks, so there's a lot of audience questions coming your way as well. So we'd love all of you to participate, raise your hand, tell me what you think the answer is and I'll go ahead and come to you for the answer. Alright, fantastic. So my colleague Akshat here. So I've got my team, Akshat, Durga, Komal. Can you guys raise your hand? Can we have a shout out for my folks, guys? They work tirelessly with the Neve team <laughs> through a lot of questions, a lot of rehearsals, etc. So hopefully you guys have as much fun as we've had kind of putting this show together for you. So folks, have you picked your topics? Team one, you've got two chits. Don't open them yet. Team two, you've got two chits. Team three, two chits. Raise your uh, thumbs up. Team four. Awesome, fantastic. Okay, so the first round, we're going to go ahead. Let's see what's, here, what's on the next screen. We have an audience question. So to start off with for everybody here, the question is on your screen. And if you know the answer, just raise your hand, ladies and gentlemen. So here's the first question. In the author interaction uh, session of the NFL Reading Challenge 2023, A.F. Harrell said he drew his inspiration from a writer 
who is very good at giving little voice to objects for his book, the song from somewhere else, in which the main character Frank had long conversations with his stomach. So, what is the name of the author who wrote the book The Mouse and His Child? Now, this is for the audience. Anybody, any child here who happens to know it? Okay, I can see, sir. Yes, sir. Why don't you tell us? We'll get a mic to you. This is the great Randall Jarrell. Uh, Randall Jarrell, the American and British author. The uh, and his child. Can you say the name again a little clearly? Randall Jarrell. How it's not, it no? I don't think it's him. It's not him. Uh, I've had to go through a lot of authors in the last 24 hours. So a lot of names sound a little familiar to me, but that's not the author, author I can tell you. Good attempt, sir. Great attempt. Anyone else wants to take a stab at this? Yes, ma'am. Russell something. That's 50% correct. His surname? You've got it. Russell Hoban is what we were looking for. Can we have a round of applause for ma'am? So Russell Hoban. So folks, the first audience question, this is to give you a sense of the caliber of questions and the caliber of teams that we have, alright? So a round of applause for ma'am. And with that, let's get started with the first question. Team 1, why don't you open one of those sheets that you have and tell us what you have in front of you. Trees. Do you say trees? Yeah. Awesome. Let's go to the question on trees, everybody. Here it is. Okay. On a way back from grocery shopping with Aunt Fanny May. So, team audiences, you'll have to keep the answers to yourselves. I will come to you specifically and then you can tell me what you think the answer is. Okay. Till then, you'll have to hold on to your horses. So, team one, on a way back from a grocery shopping, from grocery shopping with, with Aunt Fanny May, young Betty sees the lynched bodies of an African American woman and a man hanging from a tree. Identify this tree with large, fragrant flowers found widely in southern United States. So, team one, this is a question exclusively for you. No passing. We will come to the other teams respectively. You can use the mic and tell us what you think the answer is. Use the mic, please, team one. Shivnadar, ninjas. I think it's the African jasmine. I think it was mentioned in the book. You think that this could be the African jasmine and it was mentioned in the book? Unfortunately, not the answer that we were looking for. We were looking for magnolia, ladies and gentlemen. That was the answer to this question, but that's okay. Don't worry. We will get to the next set of questions, okay? Again, there's no negative marking, so feel free to take guesses here. Let's go to the next team here. Team 2, what's the topic that you want to go with here? Communities, okay. Communities, here it is. Let's see what we have for communities, okay. In addition to students from the Boom Boom Matu Karar community, Barnaville also houses students from another nomadic community. Originally hunter-gatherers, they only gained recognition as a scheduled tribe this year. So I want you to tell me, Team 2, Fountainhead, uh, what is the name of this community apart from the Boom Boom Matu Karar community that gained recognition as a scheduled tribe this year? So just give me the name of what you think this community is. That's all. There's no negative marking. Take a guess, please. And if it sounds like the answer, we will take a call on that. So go ahead and take a guess. Tell me what you think it is. Keep the discussions going as well, but I would like you to be a little quick once you've taken some time. Yes, go ahead, please. I, I think it's the... It's, it's the community of the... Uh, a group, I, I, I think it's a gr group of... You uh, have, yeah, I can tell me a little more. Go on, tell uh, me. Uh, like a group of people who are from, from like they, they. Uh, I'm so sorry, team two. Can you just give me one keyword? Otherwise, I will have to pass you. Do you want to say one last sort of answer? A group of people, something. Otherwise, we will pass. That's okay. Don't worry. We have a lot of questions coming your way. Do you have a final answer that you want to give us? No worries, we can pass this one. Guys, I want you to relax. No worries, we have a lot of questions coming your way. Can we have some applause for Team 2, guys? So this is the Nari Kuravars community that we were looking for. They're a community that used to make beads. So necklace making, bead making, that's how they really came about. So folks, questions could seem a little tough, but that's okay. You will get a hang of things, right? These are, after all, the best teams we have across the country and the globe. So let's go to Team 2, Pep School version 2. These are the book runners that we have here. folks. Which topic would you like to pick? Insects. 
Insects. Okay, let's look at the insects question. So this is from the book Checked by Cynthia. So one night when Connor takes Sinbad out for a walk, it hits him that this dog is still quite sick. Taken over by this feeling, he stomps angrily on an insect as hard as he can. Identify this insect that had come out into the bone dry night to explore, even though it's usually it usually likes damp conditions. So please tell me, team three. I think it's tarantula. Ten points to this team. They've got the right answer. Fantastic job. Tarantula is what we were looking for. And the first team on stage has opened their account. Fantastic job. This is team three. The book runners have gotten it right. Well done, folks. That is your points that you've opened. And with that, we will go to team number four. Here it is on your... Uh, tell me which topic you'd like, Neve Academy. These are the cookie squad folks that we have here. The home team, no less, as well. So team four, what would you like? Which topic would you like a question on? Birds. Birds. Fantastic. Let's look at the question on birds and see what we have. Okay, this is from searching for the songbird. From the low branch of a tree right in front of him, a two foot long white ribbon suddenly appeared. The ribbon was in fact the tail feathers of a white bird with a midnight blue crest. Name this bird Johnny encountered in Neemwala. Audiences, I request you to keep the answers just for yourself for a couple of seconds. We have exclusive questions for you. So team four, Neem Academy, what do you think is the bird in question here? What is the name of this bird? I'm looking for a specific answer team. So tell me, take a couple of seconds, tell me what you think. I think it might be the paradise songbird or something. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry team four. That is a little bit of the answer but I'm looking for something really specific. This is the grand finale. I can see some other teams are like, hey, I actually know the answer as well. So what we were looking for, team four, unfortunately, we were looking for the Indian Paradise Fire Flycatcher. So if you told me two of those two words, I was going to give it to you. Again, a round of applause. They made a really great attempt with that question. So this is the Indian Paradise Flycatcher that we were looking for. Keep the attempts going, folks. There's no negative marking. I want you to make sure you take an attempt for all these questions. Let's go to team one again. This is the second topic you can choose, Shiv Nader. The ninja team that we have on stage here. So, places. Fantastic. Lovely question that we have for this one. Now, there are four beautiful places on your screen here. You see the Grand Central Station. You see the Plaza Hotel. You see the Central Park and the New York Public Library. So, which, I'll just come to you, which book are these places connected to? So give me the name of the book, Team Ninjas. What is the name of the book? Good Thieves. That is the right answer. We're looking for the Book Thieves and plus 10 to team number 1. They've opened their account. The Book Thieves by Katrin Rundle is the book that we were looking for. They've opened their account with plus 10 with that. Well done team 1. Team Ninjas from Shiv Nader, all the way from Faridabad. They've travelled down here for the grand finale of the NLF festival. I think I was a little sports heavy. I said NFL in the, in the earlier instance I said it. My apologies for that ladies and gentlemen. With that, let's go to team 2. What topic will you be having a question on? Movies. Lovely movies, a topic I adore as well. So again, when Connor and his father evacuate to his aunt's house following the fire in the beginning of Checked, they sit down to watch a movie about a young woman who migrates to the US from Ireland in the 1950s. I want you to tell me the name of the movie, Team 2. Brooklyn. Fantastic, right answer, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brooklyn starring Saoirse Ronan, a lovely movie about time in the early part of New York, etc., especially in Brooklyn. And with that, Team 2 also has opened their account. They've got themselves 10 points with this question. Let's go to the last two questions we have for the teams on stage. Team 3, book runners, which topic would you mythology. like? Mythology. Mythology. Okay, let's look at mythology. I hear a lot of exciting ahas in the audience. Here it is. For MCA Day, Kanagi's team makes a model depicting the Great Flood as a power struggle between the Chinese goddess of the sea, Mazu, and the Norse goddess of marriage after whom Friday is named. Name this goddess who also prominently features in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the role of Thor's mother and Odin's wife. So, Team 3, on the mic, what is the name of this goddess? Freya. I will give it to you. We were looking for Friga, Freya. That's absolutely right. 10 points for Pep School. That is the right answer. So if you watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the character goes by Freya, Freya. That is the right answer. So plus 10 to Team uh, 3, Pep School. They've gotten that right. With that, let's go to the last question on stage here for Team 4. Neve Academy, what do you have? Theatre. Theatre. Okay, let's look at the question on theatre, everybody. Here it is. 
And the next two questions, audiences, they're exclusively for you. We'll come to you in just a couple of seconds. Let's look at the question on theater team. Okay, this is from the book written by David Armand. During David Armand's first visit to Japan, he watches a theater form that he describes as a drama filled with tales of battles and beheadings. Identify this theater form in which women played a role in both the role of both men and women in its initial years. So this is the question again for the Cookie Squad team that we have from Team uh, from Neve Academy. So what is the name of this theater form from Japan that we were asking you to identify exclusively for Cookie Squad? You can think about it and then tell us the answer on the mic. I can see there's a lot of communication between the teams on stage. They're like, hey, I know the answer. Do you know the answer as well? Let's find out. Team 4, what do you think the answer is, folks? And again, there's no negative marking. Feel free to take a guess, please. Other teams, please hold on to your answers. Let's go to Team 4. Quickly, folks. Are you okay? Would you like some water? Here it is. You can give this to her. Yeah, you can give that to her first. Yeah. Would you like to give us an answer, Team 4? Oh, we don't know. You don't know? That's perfectly fine. It's okay to pass. The answer that we're looking for was Kabuki. Let's look at a video about this as well. Here it is. from the book The Paper Boat about the author's first visit to Japan and Kabuki apparently there was a lot of mixing of different social classes that happened when it first really came about. Eventually they really moved the women out and then men started playing the role of men and women rather unfortunate but very very popular during the Edo period that you had which is the Kabuki form of theatre. Alright, with that Team 4 are you okay? Yeah, take a deep breath, have fun through the course of the quiz, I'm here to help you. Alright, can we have a round of applause for Team 4 first? Come on, let's give them some cheer. Octopus's Garden? Not Octopus's Garden. I'm going to give the answer for this question just in the interest of time. We were looking for a song called And Your Bird Can Sing from the album and that is from Natural Disasters. Let's ask the audience this question and then we move on to round number two very quickly. So ocean warming has been increasing the incidence of cyclones in the Arabian Sea which did not see as many cyclones as the Bay of Bengal earlier. Name the 2021 cyclone referred to in Versova Vortex that hit the western coast of India amidst the pandemic, leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. Unfortunately, what is the name of the cyclone? Very much in the real world that's, that this happened. Anyone wants to tell me what the name of it? This apparently... Uh, yes, I can see him. Why don't you tell us? Let's take the mic. I'll come to you, mommy. I'll just ask that young gentleman. Yes. Any answer, you can give us a guess, it's okay. Okay, you can think about it and tell me later. Yes, go ahead. I think the starting letter was a K. Starting letter was a K. That's a good first attempt, but not what we were looking for. Good guess though, let's ask ma'am. Is it Takute or something? Absolutely yeah. right, Takute. Takute, which is actually from the Burmese word for gecko, uh, which is what we look So Takute, Takute, as long as it sounds like the answer, we're going to give you points. So points for the audience with that question. And with that, we go on to the scores, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how our teams are faring. Let's look at the scores and see how our teams are here at the end of the first round. With two points, two answers they've gotten right. Team 3, Book Runners from Pep School V2 is currently on 20 points. Team 1 and Team 2, Ninjas and Lightning Readers have got 10 points apiece. Team 4 hasn't yet opened the account, but they have a long way to go and I'm sure they're going to do really well through the course of the rest of the questions. Let's go on to the second round, everybody. Here it is on your screen and for this one again, this is an audio identification round. So we are going to be playing you four questions. We're going to go anti-clockwise with this. So team four, this first question is going to come to you. So we're going to be playing a, a clip of an audio and I want you to identify what the question is asking. So it's from an author interaction we've had this year at the, at the reading challenge that we've had. Plus 10 again for a right answer, no negative marking, no passing as well. So let's have the first question for our friends in the audience. Just to give you a sense of how these questions are, here is the question on your screen. 
Uh, uh, many, many women in my life who have inspired me, nurtured me, cared for me, who really seen me at first and foremost, my mother uh, was a person who... So before the audio could play, we've had a young gentleman give us the answer. This is Renee Watson that we were looking for. Absolutely, yes. It's so lovely to see the parents have as much as an idea about these books as much as children. So for me, the most incredible thing is just the variety of knowledge and the various perspectives these books are bringing is pretty incredible. So Renee Watson was the first audience answer. Well done to that young man in the front for getting that right. Round of applause for him as well for getting that right. And with that, first question from round number two. Team 4, Cookie Squad, are you ready? Okay, here is your question, everybody. Team 4, I want you to identify this Carnegie Medal winning author who is speaking in this clip. Listen so I think that it's really important to tackle big, thing, big themes um, when you're writing for children because just because you're young doesn't mean that you don't experience emotions um, and go through tough times. And it's sort of patronizing to say, oh, we should only be writing some nice things for children because one, children can handle the truth of lots of things and two, children don't always experience nice things. And books, you know, lots of them should reflect life. And I also think that we all basically, no matter where we come from and what our experiences are, feel happiness, anger, fear and sadness. Those are like the core things. You want to give an answer, all... Team 4? Okay, we can pause the audio. You want to give an answer, Team 4? Katya Balin. That is the right answer. Plus 10, Katya Balin is the right answer. And she's, of course, the author of the book. Um, which is the book? Which is this? This is The Light and Everything is the book, of course. Sorry, I took a little bit of time with that one. So Katya Balin gets 10 points from Eve Academy. And they've opened their account with that as well. And the next question, book runners, team number three, on your screen, listen to the audio, please. Here it is. When I originally wrote the first, like the outline for the book, it actually was set in the lagoons of Mexico. But my publishers didn't want me to write the book set in Mexico because they thought... You want to give the answer? I, if Let's I was... pause the audio team. Okay, you're sure? You can listen to the full thing if you want. No, I know this. Fantastic. Team 3, what do you think the answer is? Hannah Gold. Fantastic answer, plus 10. This is the book, The Lost Whale. She wanted to make it a very authentic experience for the reader, so the publisher recommended that instead of having it in Mexico, where she hasn't traveled as much, she actually set it in California. And with that, Pep School gets themselves another 10 points with that. And with that, we will go on to the second team on stage. The lightning readers that we have, which is all the way from Fountainhead School in Surat. Here is your question, team two, appearing on your screen. Now, listen to the audio. And, and, and in those stories, you get, a, you get a lot of enchantments, curses, people who are transformed or inspelled in some way. And listen to the full thing. We know. You know, okay, let's pause the audio. Incredible teams here. They, don't, they heard three seconds, folks. Tell me, team two, what? Francis Hardinge. And 10 points to Laura Fontenelle School. They've gotten that right. This is, of course, the book Unraveler that we have. They've gotten themselves 10 points with this. And I saw a nice dab that that young man did as well on stage. Clearly, he's very happy. Well done. And with that, let's go to the last question of round number two. Here it is for the ninja team that we have. Shiv Nader for Here is it. Here it is. Listen carefully, please. Identify the speaker for me. So, yes, I absolutely was showing you. Oh. Here's one way a family can close you down, and here's one way. Don't you want to listen to the full thing? Okay, so, let's pause the audio. I... Team one. Sarah Pennypacker. You've made my life so easy. That's the right answer. Sarah Pennypacker was the answer that we were looking for, and this, of course, is the book that we were looking for. Was Pax Journey Home, and they've gotten themselves ten points with that. Very, very quick round that just tells you the caliber of these teams. Incredible. Two to three seconds that we've had here. Round of applause for all of them with that one. And we will have an audience question again while my team tabulates the scores. Let's have the audience question for our friends in the audience. So which book is this excerpt from? That's the question. She was some years younger than they were down at the bottom of the school, probably still in the infants while they were up at the top. Can we ask she that young lady right Sasha in the back? She's got a something or other. Right? You I'm so sorry. I take that back. I'm sincerely sorry about that. <laughs> that child from the back, I'm sorry, I take that back. That was unintentional. Uh, the yes. book is The Worlds We Leave Behind by AF Harold. That is the right answer. Fantastic. <laughs> Superbly done. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, young man, sorry about that. And with that, 
we will go on to the scores folks and here it is after two rounds of quizzing that we have here currently these are the scores that we have very very close battle we've got shiv nader with 20 points fountainhead also with 20 points a slender lead with 10 points we've got pep school with 30 points and Nee with 10 points as well. Well done for all these teams here. Again, folks, two more rounds of quizzing, right? So everybody, read the question on the screen. Think about it. You guys know the answers to these questions. You guys have prepared immensely well. Take a deep breath. Think about it and tell me what you think. And this round is the round that can make a lot of difference, folks. This isn't 10 points per right answer. You can win up to 30 points with one right answer in this question so you can really leapfrog other teams if you really want to win this all right so what folks we're going to do here is we have an image reveal round here so we will ask you to identify something there's going to be four parts to these images here all i need you to do is identify what's being asked if you get it in the first clue you get 30 points but also please know that if you get it wrong teams you will get a negative okay so i want you to be Careful, right? Take your time, no rush. You have 60 seconds. If you get it in the second clue, you get a plus 20. But if you get it wrong, you get a minus 10, unfortunately. For the third clue, you get a plus 10 and then a minus 5. And if it's the fourth clue, you get four, five points completely with no negatives, okay? So again, there's no buzzer per se here. You will get negative if you get it wrong. So take your time within the 60 seconds. And whenever you want to go to the next clue, whichever team I'm asking, please tell me, sir, can we go to the next clue? Is that okay, teams? Works? Awesome. Let's do a uh, question for the audience as well, for them to get for teams. Get a sense of how this is being conducted. 60 seconds on the clock. Here it is. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So audiences, you can tell me, hey, we need the next one. Okay, someone wants to take a stab at the first one itself. Yes. Sorry? Unfortunately, not the right answer. I want you to tell me the name of the characters here. I've got sir right there. Yes. Abindranath Suryaus. Not the one I'm looking for. Young lady Ogre at the front. The offense. Sorry? Ogre from the offense. Not that one either. Oh, next clue, sorry. Can we go to the next clue? Okay. Anybody here? The lost whale. The lost is whale. That is the right answer. Yes, but what is the name of the characters? What is the name of the characters we were looking Rio for? Rio and his mom. Absolutely. This is Rio and his mother, Bella, that we were looking for. The name of the characters. So, folks, look at the question carefully. It might tell you not to name the book per se, it might tell you to name the name of the characters. Look at the question and tell me what you think the answer is. In this case, since it was the audience, I couldn't run through them. But here, folks, you can tell me, team, can you please go to the next clue? Is that okay with you all? Yeah. Alright. And this is going to go clockwise. Let's go to team one here. This is the first question that we have here. Let's get started. Team one ninjas, here is your question. 60 seconds on the clock. Let's look at the first one. Which, who drew this illustration and wrote the book from which this image is taken? Isha Nagar. Sorry? Isha Nagar. Isha Nagar is what you're saying. I'm so sorry, team one. Let's look at the second one, third and fourth one. That's a minus 15, unfortunately. This is what we were looking for. Hold on. Let's look at this. Okay, we were looking for Cressida Cowell, folks. So, slightly negative start there, a minus 15 to team 1. Guys, it's okay. Take a deep breath, it's fine. So, now we've gotten a sense of things. Please look at the entire image and then give me an answer. Is that okay, folks? Works for you guys? Alright. So, that's unfortunately a minus 15 to team 1. Let's go to the next question on your screen. Now, team 2, lightning readers. Here it is, all the way from Fountainhead. Surat, please take your time. Let's look at the first clue. You have 60 seconds. That's a lot of time. You need more clues? You can tell me. Uh, uh, right? You need to identify the characters, yes. So, uh, this is from the worlds we leave behind. Hex's father and uh, a Hex. 30 points for that team. They've gotten that right. Incredible answer. What an answer. That's 30 points they've gotten themselves with this. This is Hex and his father from the worlds we leave behind. The book that we were looking for. Incredible. So, all at stake here. That team just got themselves 30 points with this question. So, well done. And I think as a result, they've gotten themselves in the lead as well. So, let's go on to team 3, Pep School V2. Take a deep breath, guys. Alright. All for you to win for all the teams here. Let's go 
to the question on your screen. 60 seconds starts now. So where, I want you to tell me the name of a country. Where is this picture set? The name of a country. If you want to go to the next clue, you can tell me. Next clue, next clue okay. Let's go to the second clue. Guys, the audience, hold on, please. If you want to go to the next clue, team three, you can tell me. No. Okay, do you have an answer? We do know that you have a negative of minus 10 if you do get it wrong, unfortunately. I just need you to tell me the name of the country. Where is this picture set? You want to go to the next clue? You want to give me an answer? Country. I'm looking for just the name of India. a country. That is the right answer. <laughs> she was very unsure, but she got it right. We were looking for India. And the book, of course, is Maria's Island by Victoria Hislop that we were looking for. And they've gotten, they've gotten themselves this right. And they get themselves 20 points with that. Well done, guys. Round of applause for Team 3 Pep School V2 from Bengaluru. And the last question of round number... Sorry. Yeah, the, the, the four more questions, guys. Sorry. This is the fourth question here for Team number 4. Cookie Squad from Neve Academy. Here is your question. We have four more questions after this. Here it is. Audiences, some silence, please. Just give me the person being depicted. I just need a broad answer. Okay, broad answer. Not a specific name. Audiences, please, I request you to maintain some silence. Just give me how you would refer to this person. Not a specific name. It's fine. Uh, I think it's Abhinindranath's painting of his mother. 30 points to Neve Academy. They've gotten themselves right with this one. I just needed to hear Abhinindranath Tagore's mother. If you did tell me Sadamani Tagore, that would have gotten you brownie points from me, but you still got the 30 points. That's all I wanted. Round of applause for Neve Academy. They've done a lovely job with that 30 points. Right back in contention for the grand finale here with this one 30 point attempt they've gotten. And with that, let's go to the next question. We're going again in a clockwise order. Team Ninja, Shiv Nader, Faridabad, here is your question. Same drill. One more question for each of your teams. Here it is. And team one, take your time. You know how this works. Make it up, all right? Here it is. I want you to identify any two characters out of the three. Any two out of the three. Miss, Miss Sharu and Madhu. 30 points to Shiv Nader. Which book is this? Which... Miss Madhu is the, of course the book that we were looking for. So either Madhu, Miss Sharu or Pushpa ma'am, the principal, anyone would have gotten you points. They got that in the first clue folks, so 30 points for Shiv Nader and they've undone the negative that they got in the first round. So well done for them, round of applause, very well done. And with that, team number two, team lightning readers from Surat, here is your question. Take your time, take a deep breath. Identify the building. I want you to tell me the name of the building team, the name of the building. A specific name I'm looking for here, Fountainhead. You can take a couple of more seconds, there's a lot of time. I'm looking for a very specific answer, teams. You want to go to the next clue? That's possible as well. You can. That's okay. Okay, next clue. Team two, uh, clue two. Twenty seconds left. Fountainhead, an answer quickly, please. You have fourteen seconds. You can look at the third. It's, okay. It's it's like the glass pyramid. Uh, it's the glass pyramid. The. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Fountainhead. I would have looked even if that was that. I need something a lot more specific. Unfortunately, the answer that we were looking for was actually the Arctic Cathedral in Tromso in Norway. Which book is this from, teams? Leela and the Fox. Absolutely, Leela and the Fox. You're looking for the Arctic Cathedral. It's okay, team three. Team two, it's fine. No worries. You have a long way to go. That's unfortunately a negative uh, 10, if I'm not wrong, to negative 10, I think, scoring. I hope you guys are making note of that, my team. Fantastic. Okay. With that, we will go to team three. Pep School on your screen right now. Guys, we are more than 50% done with the quiz. We have a lot of buzzer questions, but let's keep this tempo going. Team 3 book runners from Pep School, here is your second question of the image reveal round on your screen now.
which celebrated illustrator, well known for illustrating books such as Matilda and the BFG drew this image, yes. Quentin Blake. And 30 points to Pep School. Roald Dahl, of course. Roald Dahl, the big friendly giant, etc. This is the luck of the draw. So Quentin Blake gets themselves 30 points is the right answer. And let's go on to the last question of this round. Audiences, just a little more time. Uh, we'll, of course, come to you specifically for questions. I wouldn't want answers coming from you guys for the teams here. Last question of this round. Cookie Squad from Neve Academy. Last question on your screen now. Who, what is the woman in this image cooking? I'm looking for a specific answer. What is the name of, name of the dish that this woman is cooking? Yeah? You can, there's time, there's time. Next clue, fantastic. Let's go to the second clue, please. Teams, when you're discussing, keep the answers to yourselves. You don't want other teams listening to it inadvertently. Team four. Next clue. Next clue. Nice. Let's go to clue number three. It's okay to go to the fourth one as well. There's no negative with that one. Let's go to the fourth one. Okay. Fourth clue. Okay. For no negatives and plus five, Neve Academy, what is the name of the dish that this woman is cooking? I think it's fish. Can you... I'm not sure. Sorry? I'm not sure. You're not sure? I'm sorry. Uh, folks at Neve, we can give that? Okay, we're going to give points for that. That's five points. So we were right with fish. We're looking for fish curry. Fish curry, if you told me. There was a discussion here. I knew curry. I had curry with me. Why didn't you take curry from me? I had it given to you. So we're going to give you points for five points with that. Okay, so let's go ahead. And we will look at an audience question. And with that, we have back the question again for the friends in the audience here. So here it is again. One more audience reveal, if I'm not wrong. Not an audience reveal. Let's go ahead. Okay, this is a question I really liked. So which way to anywhere starts with the epigraph, the Neverland is a map of the child's mind. Which famous play is this line from or who wrote it? Either one of those should be okay. I can see her, right, um, who's raising her hand in the black t-shirt. The black t-shirt, she's raising her hand. They're raising their hand. You can ask them what they think the answer is. Shakespeare? Shakespeare. I heard someone say Shakespeare. Not the right answer, unfortunately. I'll come to you, ma'am, in the front. Can we have a mic here? Sorry? Peter Pan. Peter Pan is absolutely right. What is the name of the author? Uh, Anyone here? Uh, J.M. Barry. J.M. Barry. Barry is absolutely right. Let's look at the answer. Peter Pan or the boy who would not grow up by J.M. Barry is what we were looking for. Uh, very, very famous. Incredible story that we have. And with that, let's look at the scores, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is appearing on your screen. Let's look at the sense of the scores before the last round. What a change in fortunes for teams here. Team 1 is with 35 points. Don't worry. A lot of questions coming your way. Team 1, don't worry at all. Relax. You guys just have a long way to go. Team 2 with 40 points. Surat. Team 3, Pep School has 80 points in this quiz. And Neve Academy with 45 points with this after the end of three rounds of quizzing. Okay. Now, folks, the last round is what you refer to as drama and masala. Okay. Because you have the buzzer we're going to use here for this round, okay? So the buzzer we will test here. I've got my friends in the back end who are going to be resetting the buzzers. First thing to mention to all the teams here, folks. I need you to listen carefully to this instruction, okay? Teams, are you, are you with me? Are you listening to me? Yeah. So this is a buzzer, which is a circuit breaker buzzer. What does that mean? It simply means that if you're hitting the buzzer and you don't see a light, right? It means that someone has hit the buzzer before you. Okay, so you'll see the buzzer lighting up and I will tell which team has to give the answer. So please don't shout the answer out till I call the team. Can we make that arrangement and agreement, folks? I'll see who's buzzed and I'll ask you, I'll come to all the doubts. I'll tell you, I'll explain all of those rules to you. So if I notice the team has hit the buzzer, I will indicate for you, that team to give me the answer. Just because you hit the buzzer doesn't mean you automatically have a chance at answering. Is that clear? It's because these buzzers work in a way if someone's hit the buzzer it automatically stops working for the rest okay i'll tell you how that works now do you see two buttons on your table let's reset the buzzer team one can you hit one first do you see it's lit up here for me i can see it yeah, let's reset 
Fantastic. Let's hit it again. Hit the other one. Is it working? Are you happy? Cool. So now, no. for, no, hold on. That's why. Because this team has hit it. You can use both. That's because this team had hit it. Let me just give you an example. Can you hit the buzzer team two? One of them? Ah, she's hit it. Sorry. Hold on. I'll come to you. Team two, can you hit it again, please? Hold on. Team three, don't hit the buzzer just yet. Team two, can you hit the buzzer, please? Okay. Now, team one, why don't you try hitting the buzzer? Slightly. Yeah. Is it working? So team two, do you, teams, do you see? Because team two has hit the buzzer, it will not work for you. Are we in agreement? Does that work? And so when you get a little excited, you might shout the answer out. I would like you to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah. Only when I say, okay, I want to hear the answer from this team, they will give the answer. Does that work, folks? Okay. Now let's test the buzzers. Let's reset. Let's test the other buzzer for team two. Please hit the other one. No, no. Hold on, team three. Not yet. Team two. Yes. Okay. Both buzzers working. Are you guys happy? All right. Buzzers reset. Team three. Okay. Reset. One more. Both buzzers working. Are you guys happy? All right. Team four, buzzers reset. Hit one, please. Okay, reset. Is the other one working? Do you hear that noise as well? Yeah. Okay, great. So this is how... Yes, tell me. Can we test once more? These are the stakes of the grand finale, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's perfectly fair game. Let's, of course, test again. If that gives you some satisfaction. Yeah? Are you guys happy? That's because that team has hit it. Can you please reset? Guys, I don't want this comedy of errors happening, alright? I will tell you which team is to give me the answer and we'll work with that. Can we make the arrangement and agreement? Awesome, great. Let's go on to the next question that we have. Okay, these are the rules, folks. Again, please note, if you hit the buzzer and give me a wrong answer, what happens? Minus 5, unfortunately. So be careful, right? Be very, very careful. Plus 10 if you get it right, minus 5 if you get it wrong. And whichever team hits the buzzer first, I will call you. You need to give me the specific answer. Everyone can take a stab at this. Do we have an audience question for this one? I think we have an audience question. Oh, yes, we have an audience question yet again. Here it is. And this is not in the buzzer. This is for our friends here in the audience. You can tell me, what is the name of the club Charles Darwin was a part of when he attended the Cambridge uh, University of Cambridge? Cambridge University is what I was looking for. Um, okay, let's ask ma'am. She's a guest here. Yes. Glutton Club. Glutton Club is absolutely yeah. right. Glutton Club is what we were looking for. Yes, team two has a doubt. Please ask me. Great question, great question. So all the questions are going to appear on your screen, okay? I will read it. But in the instance you hit the buzzer, before I finish reading the question, I will stop. And I will immediately ask you for an answer, okay? Great, great, great point raised by team 2. Listen carefully, folks. If the buzzer is hit, I will want you to give me an answer immediately, okay? You're indicating to me, the quiz master, that you know the answer. Does that work? So what I do not want is you hit the buzzer, take your time reading the question and then tell me the answer. That is not uh, possible in this round. Is that okay? All right, guys. Fingers on your buzzers. Buzzers have been reset. First question of the last round of the grand finale of the reading challenge, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on your screen now. What did Matron make with the ashes of the old library? Wait, okay, team four has hit the buzzer, tell us. Uh, soap. soap is the right answer. <laughs> plus 10, plus 10. Plus 10, well done, folks. They've gotten themselves a plus 10, they've opened their account. So, folks, we clearly saw that team four has hit the buzzer, and only they could give the answer. We've reset the buzzers. Let's go on to the next slide. We have seven more questions here. The second question, teams, are you ready? Yeah. Second question appearing on your screen now. Name the press that published the anti-British leaflets in the train to Tanjore. Okay, team one is hit the buzzer. What is the name of the press? Press India. No. Uh, Quit India Movement Press. Quit India Press. Absolutely the right answer. We were looking for the Quit India Press. What an answer. What an answer. On the fly from team one, Shiv Nader Faridabad. And they get themselves with, uh, he's also a collective sigh of relief for him for getting that right. He almost had the words but didn't have it as well. So well done. Round of applause for team one, Shiv Nader from Faridabad. Okay. Buzzes have been reset. Let's go. Guys, take a deep breath. Question number three. Buzzes have been reset appearing on your screen now. What is the name of that new gang in the pickpocket? Okay, team two has gone for it on the buzzer. 
What is the name of the gang? The, the gang name is Nay. That is not the right answer. This is just one attempt for question teams. I'm sorry. That is not the answer we were looking for. Let's look at the answer slide. We were looking for bread boys. We were looking for bread boys, ladies and gentlemen. A healthy instruction. Hitting the buzzer harder doesn't mean that you get a chance. Please be a little delicate with those, delicate with those buzzers. All right. Um, that's unfortunately a minus five to team two. It's okay, guys. Take a deep breath. You have a long set of questions. Six more questions. 60 points at stake. A deep breath with all the teams. Okay. Let's go to the fourth question on your screen now. What is the... I want a specific answer for this one, teams. Specific answer. What is the address on the letter that Asha receives? If you want to go for it, you have to hit the buzzer. Hit the buzzer. Okay, team two has gone for it. Team two, what's the answer? Quickly. On the mic, please. 102 Connaught Place, Zandapur. Wow, what an answer, guys. What an answer. I thought there was going to be some doubt about this. They gave me exactly what I was looking for. 102 Connaught Place from Zandapur was what we were looking for. And they're very happy that they got that right. They've undone the negative. That's okay. Keep it going, guys. Plus 10 to Fountainhead. They've gotten themselves 10 points with that one. Plus 10. Okay, buzzers have been reset. The fifth question... Okay, guys, are you guys ready for the fifth question? What we will do after the end of the sixth question, teams, is we will look at the scores at the, after the sixth question, just to get a sense of where teams are, what kind of drama we might have. We might have tiebreakers required, I don't know. But we'll figure that out later. Fifth question appearing on your screen now. Who says these lines? But please make a road that leads towards the will. Okay, team three has gone for it on the buzzer. Who said these lines? Sakumat from Glow Rushes. Unfortunately, not oh, the right answer. I'm so sorry. That's a minus five. You got the book right. We will... Exactly. I'm so sorry. That is a negative five. Unfortunately, we were looking for Madura from Glow Rushes by Roberto Piumini. Guys, that's the... That's the amount of challenge that these teams have. So much drama, so much tension. So it's okay. Round of applause for team three. That's a negative five, but that's okay. You guys have a lot more questions coming your way. We have three more questions left, folks. At the end of this, we will look at the scores again so that you know who's where. And of course, I haven't mentioned you. We have prizes here as well. You have a great set of books coming your way for the winners of this quiz. You have certificates. Trophy is engraved as well. All of that is at stake here at the grand finale of the reading challenge of the Neve Literature Festival 2023. Okay, three more questions here in the grand finale. Teams, you know, uh, say your prayers, you know, stay in the, stay in the right, right spot if there's some superstition, you know. Say all of that. Last three questions. Question number six appearing on your screen now. What does Knox tell his dad as he boards the airport express on his way? Okay, team four has gone for it on the buzzer. Power of attorney. That is the right answer. Wow. What an answer. Power of attorney. So Knox says power of attorney because his dad is a lawyer and it is something his dad often says to reassure Knox. This time Knox says it to his dad as he's going to be alone in Hong Kong. So a reversal of assurement from the father to the son, in this case son to the father. Now guys... Lots of scores have happened. Let's take a deep breath. Let's look at the leaderboard, ladies and gentlemen, and see how we have the remaining two questions. And here it is. Anybody can win this quiz, folks. Okay? Again, it's... Sorry? Okay. Oh, brace yourself. Okay. Guys, you guys are as much as a participant in this quiz. This is the first ever quiz where I've sat where the audience is as much as a member of this. So a round of applause to all of you guys. Because I got... I thought there was an answer coming from the audience and I turned in a bit of a rush. Okay? So well done, guys. So this is the scores. Team 1 and 2 with 45 points apiece. Team 4 from Neve Cookie scored with 65 points. And with a 10-point slender lead, we've got Pep School with 75 points. Okay? Folks, two more questions that we have. Let's go back to the question set. Take a deep breath. Two more questions. Okay, the penultimate question. Here is the seventh question appearing on your screen. Now, from which major city in Pakistan did Maya's journey... Okay, team three has gone for it on the buzzer. Yes. Karachi. That is the right answer. Fantastic. 
Karachi was what we were looking for, of course, this is from Ticket to India. And with that, we have a sense of the scores. We now know that Team 3 and Team 4 are 75 points apiece. Lot of drama. We will see who... Ult I'm so sorry, I missed that. Uh, okay, clearly, I'm getting very nervous with all the drama that's happening here. So, 85 for Team 3, 65, and it means that I think we have a winner here with this quiz. But that's okay. Focus on this. But before we go to the last question, okay? Usually I do this before the last question. I want to thank all the folks here at Neve, the team that's put this together, and for having us at Kushala as a part of this. Can we have a round of applause for the lovely folks at Neve for the literature challenge, for the reading challenge that we have? Very rarely do you come across a competition and ethos of this caliber anywhere in the world. So with that, let's leave the teams on stage to figure out the answer to the last one. Last question appearing on your screen now. What law did Vikram Agnihotri work to amend? Okay, who's going for it? Okay, team one has gone for it. He had no hands. What is the name of the law was what I was looking for, unfortunately, team one. Not the fact that he had a disability where he didn't have hands. That is absolutely true. But I was looking for a law, unfortunately. And with that... That's a negative five to team one. I'm so sorry about that. I'm sincerely sorry. But that's just the luck of the draw with these uh, staged competitions. Let's ask our friends in the audience what they think the answer to this question. Which law or act is this? If anyone's read this book. Clearly a bit of a toughie here. No one? Okay, do you want to ask our friends in the stage? Teams, which law, what is the name of this law or act? I don't know. Vansh? Who's Vansh here? Yes, Vansh. Do you think you know this? Sorry? Ampute. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you say that on the mic? Ampute. Ampute, okay, not quite. Okay, so this is a bit of a toughie. So I would request uh, Kavita ma'am to be available for the prize distribution if it's possible. I will of course hand over the mic to you guys. Let's look at the answer slide and see what's happening. This is the Motor Vehicle Act that we were seeking, unfortunately, folks. A bit of a toughie, the last question, of course. This is the grand finale after all. Teams on stage, can you all smile, please? And give you a round of applause for these beautiful teams here. Yeah.